Welcome to Longmont Voices and Vision, a project of Longmont Public Media. In the midst of the darkest period in our lives, when we're bombarded 24 hours a day with news of the coronavirus and the human and economic carnage it's causing in our society, we're challenged to cope with our fears and anxieties while remaining hopeful about what lies on the other side of this crisis. This project presents an opportunity for Longmont residents to share with others how they're adjusting to new realities of social distancing and the kind of future they hope to experience on the other side of the crisis. I'm Tim Waters, host of these conversations and a Longmont public media volunteer. In this series, I'll be asking Longmont residents, many of them your friends and neighbors, three questions. What are you doing to get through this crisis? Even though we cannot be together right now, how are we staying connected to friends and families? And what's the future you are hoping to see and experience on the other side of this crisis? I hope you'll stay with this series and enjoy listening to your friends and neighbors and learn from them how they're getting through and what they're looking forward to in a new reality on the other side. Vito Montone, thank you for lending your voice and your vision to this Longmont Voices and Vision project. To get us started, uh, why don't you just share a little bit about who you are? Yes, hi, I'm uh, W. Vito Montone, I go by Vito. Uh, I moved to Longmont about two years ago now, or is it three? I don't know, I'm losing track. Um, I run a strategic agency that does work for people around the country. Um, and I am um, the new president of a board of the Longmont Council for the Arts. Well, three questions you know I'm going to ask uh, right now, as, given where we are in this, uh, in this experience, right, with this pandemic. Uh, first question is uh, just being curious about how are you getting through um, this current situation? Well, well you know, it, it's... I don't know if other people can relate to it, but I, for probably, I don't know how many years of being self-employed, uh, we've run a virtual company. <laughs> so for us to be home more than normal is, is normal. You know, we're, we're normally here all the time. Um, and I guess uh, a year or so ago, a year ago, uh, we were blessed where my son, uh, an adult son, chose to move to Longmont, and then we chose as a family to buy a house together. So our core family is together. So that's also normal for us. <laughs> and what we've been doing, frankly, is uh, re-experiencing all the Marvel movies in chronological order. <laughs> yeah. So uh, not the way they were released, but the actual storylines. And it's unbelievable what, you know, what uh, Stan Lee created and what he was able to keep together. Uh, so every <laughs> night, we watch a movie. We're, I don't know, we're halfway, you know. So um, it, it, that, that's what we do. And we look forward to that every night. So in a, in a, in a moment in history when uh, physical separation and social distancing are now expected, but so unprecedented for us. How, what are you doing to stay connected to, you've already answered part of the question in terms of staying connected to nuclear family, but the rest of your family and friends, how are you staying connected? Well, we've uh, used uh, Google Meet, and we use, uh, of course, we're part of the wave of using Zoom, yeah. which, is, uh, yeah. which is fascinating that uh, my son's, one of my divisions of my son's company actually supports Zoom, so they're pulling their hair out um, with all the new demand. Uh, and of course, FaceTime and chats. Um, because we are normally a virtual group, uh, we just stay connected that way anyway. Um, and on a practical basis, we are, you know, Amazon Prime members. We get a lot of our staples that way, uh, except for toilet paper, it appears. Uh, and even our protein, we get it from a, 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 a uh, a far farming system run by the individual farmers called Moink, 
and we have all our protein delivered. Uh, so we hardly go out, uh, you know, except to walk the dog. And everyone's, at least in our neighborhood, which is not far from yours, we're uh, very, uh, everyone seems to be pretty respectful of the distancing, you know, just opposite yeah. sides of the sidewalk or whatnot. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't, you know, because of people that might be having hardships, I, I hate to say this, but it's, it's kind of normal for us. Yeah. Well, my third question, as you know, uh, going into this, whatever was normal before this pandemic and social distancing and the isolation, coming out the other side, whatever the new normal is, likely going to be different. Life is likely not going to be the same. So given that, um, the third question is, what's your preferred future? What do you want to move to or toward on the other side of this? Well, um that's obviously the most thought-provoking question. <laughs> and uh, certainly, it seems that we're being taught a massive lesson that we're a bunch of human guests on a planet that ought to be working together and being cooperative and being pre prepared for listening to experts as to what we should be being prepared about. I think it's the most disconcerting condition that we watched uh, you know, a very large economy uh, pretty much knock it out of the park on fighting the pandemic. And we still don't seem to be really listening. Uh, and we did a variety of things a few years ago that disabled our ability to respond. And uh, I think breaking down those walls that are silly and politically biased uh, you know, partisan, it, when we're supposed to be taking care of each other. I, I just, it, it's, it's almost stupefying to me. Uh, like we're supposed to be intelligent and powerful and smart, and here we're doing super dumb things. <laughs> you know, it's really fascinating. So I'd like to see a more related, intellectually caring world of each other moving forward, even in our small town. Yeah. You know, we're part of the system, right? So. You know, thank you so much uh, for contributing to this project. Uh, take good care of yourself and your family, and we'll see you on the other side of this pandemic. Absolutely. You too. Stay safe. All right. Talis, thank you so much for your contributions to the Longmont Voices and Vision project. Uh, these, we've started all these interviews by asking those involved to, to talk about themselves. So. Get it, let, it, let people know who you are. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the invitation. Um, I'm Talis. I am the host of The Savvy Entrepreneur on uh, Longmont Public Media, as well as on my own YouTube channel. I have been in entrepreneurship since 2004 when I started my first company. I have since been involved with multiple companies in multiple different industries from financial technologies to um, aggregating web uh, apps to market inefficiency plays to pharmaceuticals, uh, including a chemotherapy drug that I'm involved with, a laparoscopic surgical tool, uh, other medical devices, as well as aerospace and uh, graphene nanostructure technology. Um, I also taught at the University of Colorado. I was um, lucky enough to get the opportunity to teach at the age of 30. So I was one of the younger uh, the faculty members there. Uh, I've also written a book called The Savvy Entrepreneur's Business Handbook. And yeah, I am happy to speak with you today. Um, thanks. First of three questions. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, in a, we're in a moment in, kind of unprecedented in, in any of our lives in terms of what we're going through. How are you getting through um, this current situation? I think I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I've been focusing on making content. I've been uh, speaking with a lot of professionals regarding this COVID, whether it's um, accountants or other business professionals talking about what they've done in order to make it through this hard times or people who've been displaced because, uh, you know, financially displaced uh, because of the situation. Um, yeah, staying at home, I'm lucky I have a backyard. I have an awesome wife that I can hang out with. I just got three ducklings, so, uh, playing around with them, just built them a duck house. And uh, actually, right before we jumped on this call, I was setting up to build my raised planter beds that I've been meaning to put together. There you go. 
Uh, we're in a moment in time where we are kind of the, the physical isolation and social distancing is unprecedented in our lives. How are you staying connected to family and friends in this time of social isolation? You know, that's a, that's a great question. It's one of the topics that I spoke with a PhD psychologist about. And um, if you, not to do a shameless plug, but if you want to check out my content about this, I've got great tips and tricks from PhD talking about how social distancing and isolation can impact the psyche. So um, yeah, a very fascinating topic. I have been staying con connected with my in-laws and my direct family members through video conferencing and through telephone uh, calls. I have had friends, a couple that are uh, being impacted by this. Um, a couple of them are uh, depressed and one of them you know, was, uh, was severely depressed and so it's it has definitely taken tolls on uh, people who are close to me and uh, luckily you know with technology you can you know, communicate readily I can't imagine what it was like in 1919 flu epidemic when people had no quarantining and uh, you have to write a letter and then <laughs> hope that the mail carrier didn't die and then <laughs> you know it's it's quite a different time. So I think we're in a much better place than uh, people have been in the past. The third of my three questions uh, really is about the future. Mm. And it's safe to assume that whatever the new normal is on the other side of this pandemic, life will be different than it was on the front side of this pandemic. So for you, uh, assuming we, could, we can influence or help to shape some of what that new normal is, What's your preferred future? What would you like to see and experience on the other side of this? Another very good question. I would like to see people understanding the value of social programs. I think that people should um, realize after this that you know, universal health care is something that we actually need for cases like this. People are going to realize that a universal basic income is something that isn't just a pie in the sky idea, but it's something that can actually be implemented and could be very beneficial in times like these. I think that um, you know, property values uh, for commercial real estate are going to drop, making it a lot easier for um, you know businesses to get office space if they need to. And I also I also think that you know a lot of the growing pains that have prevented us from working. Uh, at home more are going to be overcome after this. People are going to realize how awesome it is to just roll out of bed, make breakfast, grab a shower and get to work within 30 minutes rather than ha spending, you know, an hour commuting. You know, I've been working from home for a very long time. Luckily I'm an entrepreneur. I have the flexibility to do that. Many members of my team are international and across the U S so I've been doing this for a very long time, and I think um, it's kind of a best kept secret kind of thing that a lot of people are going to wake up to. One of my colleagues is a professor at MIT, and he was saying that MIT is not going to even bring in new freshmen until next January, so a full year without class. And they've been trying to implement at home learning uh, with good success considering they're a top tier university with a ton of resources. But I do see education changing along with working in the fact that a lot of it will be done at home. I do acknowledge that there are people who maybe won't thrive in that type of learning environment as, as well as work environment as others might. But I, I do feel as though this is a more efficient use of labor when possible to have them just you know work at home and the other great thing is Longmont has next light internet right so I'm here with gigabyte speeds and uh, I think our picture looks really good today <laughs> well your, yours probably looks better than mine <laughs> so, Talis thank you so much for your willingness to participate in this project uh, take care of yourself and your family stay safe yeah, thanks, Tim. Good job on the project. I commend you for such a great endeavor. Thanks. Take care. Karen Dyke, thank you so much for lending your voice and your vision to this Longmont Voices and Vision project.
a good way to start these interviews has been to learn a little bit about who's being interviewed. So tell us about you. Um, okay, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm Karen <coughs> and uh, I'm a retired nurse. I worked primarily, <coughs> excuse me, I worked primarily in uh, nursing administration, um, ICU, ER type uh, directors. <coughs> Excuse me, I have to start coughing. This is new, this isn't the virus. So just, uh, <laughs> Important to point out to everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need a mask around you. Well, you do need a mask around you. But anyway, um, so I'm a retired nurse. I moved uh, back to uh, Colorado and back to Longmont when I retired. I have uh, four grandchildren here, two sons and their um, their wives and, and my four grandchildren. So uh, what I do now is I play bridge and we figured out how to play bridge on uh, Zoom and a, and a website, um, and um, which is good. And I'm also an activist and I work on uh, environmental uh, issues, primarily um, about fracking because of the air pollution with that. And then also um, climate change. And so I keep really busy with those things. And I like to garden. So I'm uh, glad if I'm stuck at home that I'm at least uh, able to get outside and <laughs> some lettuce and uh, look at the, um, the tulips that are blooming and such. You know, um, I'm going to ask you three questions. The first is, uh, in this period that's unprecedented for any of us, probably unprecedented in, the, in human history, um, how are you getting through the current situation? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, uh, I have my jigsaw puzzle back here. I'm doing jigsaw puzzles. Um, you know, I'm kind of, I've always been that uh, news person, always reading the newspaper and such, and and uh, have the news on to anything exciting happening or disastrous happening. And I found I've had to uh, back away from that. Yeah. Um, I do like to read, but I find that I uh, have difficulty holding my attention to, to, uh, to books. It's hard to get into that. So jigsaw puzzles have been good too. Um, I can uh, uh, watch something mindless on Netflix or Hulu. Um, I, uh, my kids don't want me to go out anywhere, so I've been very few places since uh, late March. Uh, I haven't been anywhere where I've been um, out of the car. I went to the bank and at the ATM and such. Uh, my youngest son brings me groceries a couple times a week. Um, uh, so, you know, it's um, at some point isolating, but uh, we figured out the Zoom is a good way to um, connect. We did. A, I did a book club this morning with my book club, and and uh, uh, most of the people are uh, older than I am, and all but one managed to get on to the site. So that was really good. Um, so yeah, just um, you know, I I did walk down at Golden Ponds a couple times, but. Um, I see the people walking. I live real, really close to there. I can walk to there. I see the people walking look very sad and it makes me sad. So I'm better off in my garden, I think, than uh, out walking. I do uh, just go to the, walk to the mailbox here and such. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting through it. It is uh, isolating and I've gotten kind of used to that. And I talk on the phone a lot. I really don't enjoy talking on the phone that much, but I talk on the phone a lot now. You may have already answered my second question, and that is, how are you staying connected to family and friends? Yeah, yeah. Anything, to, any, anything else to add to that one? You know, probably the other thing is uh, staying connected with my activism work, um, because, you know, um, we know that when we get through this, we have a crisis worse than the, this pandemic facing us, which is climate chaos. Yeah. And we've already watched bits and pieces of that. We saw Australia on fire, uh, who we've seen in the past, huge fires in California in our own forests. And so, you know, that, that, um, that is still out there pressuring us. Um, so um, I continue with uh, meetings and, uh, you know, emails and online uh, working on that. And, I, I do work with the Sustainable Resilient Longmont. We do our meetings online now. We have our Renewable Energy Committee 
um, which is the one that uh, pushed for the Ready for 100. So we've been working um, very diligently with uh, PRPA is changing their, uh, they're working on, a, on their process for what their goals are for the next uh, 20 years. And, and uh, unfortunately they've put natural gas in there and um, that doesn't work very well for me. And I think most people who um, live in Longmont, we voted strongly, we didn't like natural gas, so why we'd move to natural gas when we know how polluting and damaging it is to the atmosphere makes no sense. So continuing to work with several different groups and uh, a, a, along the activism line, trying to uh, keep our, our, um, our path open. Uh, we're probably going to do, I know we're doing an Earth Day uh, thing uh, here this week. Here's just the 50th anniversary of Earth Day and we can't celebrate yeah. it like to, uh, but um, we'll be doing a webinar uh, for Earth Day that has some uh, children, uh, youth, uh, they're, not, they're not kids, they're teenagers, uh, a panel uh, with them and then we'll be doing um, a webinar in May um, about renewable energy uh, just to uh, keep that going forward. So I stay very busy with activism. Thanks. Well, much of what you just described, I suspect tees up the third question, and that is, uh, it's safe to assume that on the other side of this pandemic, whatever the new normal is, will life will be different than it was before this pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have the opportunity to, to shape some of that, whatever the new normal is. So for you, what's the preferred future? What would you like what are you drawn toward? What, you, what would you like to see an experience on the other side of this? Yeah, I think, you know, a, no, a number of things. I, um, as I look at the future, I think we, we have to take what we've learned about this pandemic and um, build a better future off of that. We've seen that our federal government hasn't worked. Uh, at least in my mind, they've kind of stood in the way. We've had like uh, uh, city states doing the work themselves. We've had the states trying to uh, do all of this and it's, it's very mismanaged. Um, and I, I say that from a healthcare background. We need, we need strong leadership from the federal government to prepare us for what's coming. Uh, to help us define a path that isn't based on profit, but it's based on the needs of the earth. And um, we need, we, we are going to have to deal not only with the U.S., but we need strong leadership here so that we can, um, around the globe, work on um, how we defeat climate change. We haven't done a good job of that with this pandemic. Other countries have done a much better job than the U.S. have, and it kind of hurts my heart. Um, like most people my age, um, you know, I've always had this thing that the U.S. is great, and you know, we're very innovative and creative, and we can do anything. We have really, this has really been bungled, and that kind of hurts my heart with how we haven't been the leaders. You know, we. Um, we just haven't been out there being creative. And, and as a result, um, thousands of people have died uh, that probably didn't need to. And, and uh, uh, one of the ladies that died last night, I know. And uh, that's very discouraging to me that, uh, that, um, that she had to die. And um, yeah, that's just very discouraging. And we could have, uh, we could have done better. You know, South Korea and some other countries did a much better job than we did of flattening the curve and um, keeping it from spreading. Karen Dyke, thank you for your activism. Yeah. Thank you as well for your contributions to this project. Okay. Uh, take care of yourself and your family. And uh, when we can all come back thank out you. of our homes, uh, we'll see you outside. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye-bye.